Hello, children. Welcome to Sunday School. We're back in our section. What do you think about that? We're going to change things up a little bit this morning and hopefully down the future. We're going to start off with a song. Those of you who attended Shipwrecked about two summers ago should remember all of these songs. They'll come back to you very quickly. Those of you who, who haven't sung them, the words will be on top of your screen and just stand up and follow the movements and enjoy yourselves. So here we go. The song is Never Let Go of Me and it is published by Group Publishing in 2018. Never Let Go of Me. opened up my eyes to see when you rescued me. I hope you're all energized and ready for our lesson this morning. Before we start, I have some announcements. Families, we are going to be holding a vacation Bible school yet this summer. Uh, it's actually going to be in September, and I realize this is a very, very, very late notice, but we need to do this, so please watch for any announcements on that. Uh, Maribel will probably be calling some of you families. We are going to offer it virtually and in person with all safety precautions taken. So we're eager to get that started for you. I'm still looking for acolytes to do from home uh, for our Sunday school lessons and fun story readers. Some of you love to read and I know you've got favorite books out there. So let's get you on recording and get all this information out to Holly. It's a very simple process, I promise. So get a hold of me. 
We have an empty bulletin board over here. I would love to fill it with your names. So please let me know if you have attended Sunday school. I don't care if it's on Sunday or Monday or Tuesday, but let me know you've been here by sending me an email and we'll get your names up on the board for some color. Okay, great. Let's light our candle to remind us that God is always with us. I'm going to give you, before we start our story, a little thought question today from a book. We have a series of these down in the children's department. This book is called Dear God, Help, and it is copyrighted by Flying Frog Publishing in 2005. So starting out today, let's see what someone writes to God. Dear God, Help. Often, when I want to play and have fun, I have a chore or homework to do, but I want to play all the time. Well, God wants you to have fun, but there are times for having fun and times for working. It pleases God when we do what we are supposed to do, like helping our parents or gaining knowledge by doing our homework. Even though chores and homework are not always fun, you can still enjoy doing what is right. Honor God in everything you do. And we have a Bible verse this morning from the book of Ecclesiastes, and it states, For there is a proper time and procedure for every matter, though a man's misery weighs heavily upon him. And what does that mean to you? That means life is hard but there is a time and place for everything. Dear God, help. We are going to bounce back again into the Old Testament and to Moses, the person who is leading the Israelites out of slavery in Egypt. Um, we're gonna go way back after the burning bush and after he got the Ten Commandments, but they're still on their journey to the promised land and they have spent 40 years wandering in the wilderness of the Sinai Peninsula, which is a real place. During this time, the Israelites built a dwelling for God. And let's see how that happened. Story today is from Read, Wonder, and Listen, and the book is copyrighted in 2018 by Wood Lake Publishing. So, a special place for God. Trusting God to show them the way, the people of Israel traveled slowly through the desert toward the promised land. God went with them, sometimes appearing as a cloud by day or a fiery pillar against the dark night sky. One day, God said to Moses, make a special place for me and I will live among you and go with you wherever you go. Why, Moses wondered, you have been with us all along. Why do you need a special place? And God replied, it is not for me, it is for you, to help you remember who you are and who I am. Then God told Moses what to do. Moses asked all the people to give whatever they felt in their hearts they wanted to give to God. So the people brought out all their best and most beautiful treasures, gold and silver jewelry, purple and scarlet yarn, acacia wood, ram skins dyed red, the finest oils and spices, and gems of every color. When all these treasures were gathered together, the best craftspeople set to work. Out of acacia wood, they built a special box, an ark, and covered it with hammered gold. 
Inside, they put some stone tablets with God's ways written on them, like the ark that held Noah's family and all the animals, and the ark in which Moses floated down the Nile, this ark also held a treasure. What do you think that treasure is? The ways of God written on stone or the Ten Commandments, right? Then they built a table and covered it with gold too. Every Sabbath, which is their worship time, they laid out on the table 12 loaves of flat or unleavened bread. The bread reminded the people of the night they escaped from Egypt, but also of how God made a picnic for them in the desert. Next came a golden lampstand with seven burning lights and the altar of incense covered with gold. When they saw the dancing flames and the clouds of smoke rising from the altar, the people remembered how God had traveled with them as cloud and fire. They also remembered how the holy mountain had been covered in smoke and fire when Moses went up to talk to God. You remember the burning bush, right? From the finest wood and wool, they carved walls and wove cloths to make a tent. Inside the tent, they made a special hidden room, the holiest place of all. It was separated from the rest of the tent by a beautiful veil woven from purple and scarlet wool and embroidered with wonderful winged creatures. When the people saw the veil and knew that behind it there was a hidden room, they remembered that there is always part of God that is hidden and mysterious. There is more to God than anyone can know. Whenever the people gathered in the tent, which they called a tabernacle, and remembered and prayed and sang and told stories, they felt closer to each other and closer to God. That was the purpose of all the beautiful and special things. When it was time to move, the people packed up the tent and everything in it and carried it with them. So even in the wildest and loneliest places, they were sure God was with them. The tabernacle. This is in our worship space. Many of you have looked at it many times. This kind of gives us an idea of what that might have looked like. What a task to make something so beautiful, but to honor God. And as it says, they felt closer to each other when they got together and sang songs and told stories and prayed. And isn't that what we strive to do here in Sunday school and at church? If you could build a house for God, a very special house with all your special things, what would it look like? One of the activity sheets that we have sent home gives you the opportunity to do that. Draw yourself a picture, write down some of the things that you would include. Just build your special home for God. And I want you to think about where you might see God. They saw God in the clouds and the smoke and many, many other places. Where do you see God? I see God in nature. I love nature. I love being outside. And I see God especially in my flower gardens. You know that I'm a gardener and I'm always looking at beautiful colors and beautiful patterns of all the different flowers. And to me, God is there. Also when the birds are singing in the trees, that's a wonderful, wonderful time to think about God. Let us have our blessing and our prayer, and we'll close up Sunday school. Remember to get a hold of me. Let me know you were here. I need your names up on that board. So, children, remember God shows up in many places. Let's have our prayer. 
Dear God, thank you for showing us how to make special places to worship you. May we always know you guide us and are always with us. And the people of God say, Amen. I miss you. Have a good week ahead. And we'll talk soon. Bye.